the improvement quality to price ratio is it's a total no-brainer these are sort of important to me because i can use them across anything that i'm painting really it's just got amazing coverage a lovely rich sort of dark metallic tone to it i've got a whole bunch of these i've got about 10 of these i've solved the airbrush primer issue i think if you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. James is back, and absolutely nothing has happened in his absence. Run of the mill, business as no, usual. Just a boring old episode. Uh, I beg to disagree. A <laughs> um, few little things. Actually, they ran quite smoothly, I think. Yeah, I mean, look. They, they were that, pretty good. The great episodes. I, I, I sat in your chair. Yep, it brilliant. was good. Yeah, kept it warm for me. Like, um, yeah, I, I was Picard for an episode. Picard, Make it so. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you that. Picard's a good character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was infected with Nurgle for some time. Was, yeah. uh, that wasn't very good. Um, yeah. And uh, and yeah, just wasn't wasn't very good at all, being honest with you. So uh, yeah, but loads happened, which is good. So everything, nothing, the, the, the world didn't collapse, which is always, always good to know. We had uh, we had Kerry off on the show. And then the episode yeah. before that, we did no slandering of anything James likes no. in particular. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit, maybe, maybe a bit more later. But but I was gutted about the Kirioth episode because I really wanted to chat to him. Number one, he he loves tanks. I love tanks. We know that. He loves converting. I love converting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I was really gutted. that. On, on the know. upside, though, it meant that we had a real conversation and it wasn't just those two gushing over <laughs> yeah. tank conversions. Yeah, it yeah. was a good episode. I watched yeah. it. It was, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. He's an absolute legend. Yeah, really, really lovely guy. And um, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I could, didn't get to chat to him about it, about stuff. But hopefully we'll have him back in the future. And yeah. then we can have a real real natter about armor and conversions. Mm. It's quite interesting for us to have um, people on that do stuff that we don't do. Because mm -hmm. it's kind of yeah. like uh, role reversal. Like, yeah, not everyone I get is to learn from uh, them. <laughs> doing the stuff you do here. So it's yeah. good to get the other the other end of the, the, the stick. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Mm. I was moderately uh, gaslit by the <laughs> by the by the the moment of opportunity which George took to uh, yeah. to slate um, something very close to my heart, which is uh, all which is... the retro paints. And it's, this has got to go in two quick little segments here. Um, one, Paul, I'm mm. very disappointed of a man of the same ilk as myself. No, but the, no, 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 no excuses. <laughs> no excuses. The majority of the comments on the reel on our Instagram, i just want to say a massive personal thank you to every yeah. single person that fought the good fight <laughs> and refuted the outlandish claims that the oldest old paint are not as good um, because I saw plenty of comments about tin bits, chain mail, <laughs> mithril bit. silver. I, I actually saw plenty of comments saying how most of the paints were crap yeah. other than no. tin bits. Yeah. I, think you need, I think yeah. you need to read through those comments because well, there was there was things about saturation of colour, how the old paints are super saturated and yes, they are a little bit thinner and take more to go on but when they yeah. go on, they're vibrant. There was a lot of defending. 12 coats. Yes. <laughs> it, 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 we always say multiple thin coats um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who defended them because in my absence while Nurgle was infesting me like um like like never ever, ever before. Um and cheers for all the DMs about all the butt hurt people, about yeah. your old paint that you paid a fortune for that's terrible. Uh, that's I'll true. continue to think that it's I love nostalgia. Don't mean I have to like using it. It's wicked to see these things. They again. look rad on a shelf. They don't do. They? Yeah. No. they look very cool on a shelf. No, I, I there's there's more to be said about this, but but I won't bore more everybody time. with that. Um in other news, however, mm. I was gifted with Nurgle, but this week or the last couple of weeks in my illness, I've been gifted so well by the new Blood Angel releases. And I've got to say it right now because 
Oh boy, am I excited. <laughs> yeah, these are, well, we're, we're recording this episode on Tuesday and we had literally just yesterday, we had to like change the show notes because there was, the captain was revealed and the apothecary. Yeah. And my God, that captain is one of the best 40K releases it's I've really seen good. in a long while. It's really good to turn a man from any other model, can't it? Or chapter paint, or, or, or faction. Yeah. yeah um, or just, you know, painting in general. I, I've got to say this. I think that they are some of the best Primaris models. And obviously, it's very opinionated and by yes. a statement because obviously. The I don't know what you're talking about. We're such neutral Blood yeah, Angels I know. fans. I know. Like, I know. Yeah. No I'll try, I'll try, I've tried to water it down, but it's just, yeah. it's just, just impossible. Um, <laughs> the nod to Tycho with that shoulder pad with the blood drops. Mm. Like a lot of people, like, a lot of people say, oh, it's like a new thing. Like, if you know of Captain Tycho, uh, the protégé to Dante as and you would have taken Dante's place model. if anything happened to Dante um, it's quite subtle though because I'm not it's from great. that era it's of great. Those I did ask George this morning if that was it. a bit of a nod to Tycho well, I didn't catch it because that model's yeah. like long before yeah, yeah. it was like it, 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 90s or something wasn't it, it? it's the thing that I always go on about which is using the law and narrative to add nuances of and nods mm. to previous things which I think is something that the, the design team at GW did an amazing job with that model like just having that there is a really nice little nod to Tycho and giving the opportunity yeah. to keep that that sort of like type of armor or that that stylistic uh, aesthetic detail moving forward like in yeah. the new range as well which I think is brilliant um the other thing that I spotted on the the, the thing there's a multi multifaceted picture of the captain in different poses or different things there's also one that's in like gold armor mm. the helmeted head yeah. is like the perfect replacement head for Dante like because it's got the Death I don't know why you're so annoyed yeah. about I'm not annoyed. I'm not, like, <laughs> so I'm not annoyed about it. I've been going on about this for like two years yeah. now. Purely because the Death Master Sanguinius is like an heirloom of the chapter and it wouldn't just be welded to the faceplate of a Mark 10 helmet. Okay. Like it's something that is is a is a relic of the chapter. Long story short, the new helmet Thank or goodness. head in that in that <laughs> captain book set, yeah, it has the exact same number of spikes on the top of the head crest as Dante has. So it's got seven, which is what he has. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is Good where Lord. this is where fanboys lose me. Right. Yeah. Counting the spikes, like there's a new model release and it looks amazing. But and it's they're a like, cool oh, model, they're nonetheless. Like, they're like, oh well, uh, actually, I think you find that he had well, actually, eleven spikes. He's got on his no head. nipples molded onto his <laughs> chest plate. I have never once <laughs> refuted being a super fanboy of, of of Blood Angels, and I will stick to that till my dying day. The, the, that head is perfect to swap out and put on Dante to make mm. him look closer to the previous model, which I absolutely love. Yeah, um, and and love overall, that. yeah, I, and let's not let's not give uh, uh, give the uh, sang the uh, sang priest uh, an overlook as well because that model's amazing. Like it's really really They're good. Like apothecary, yeah, They're the like, sang yeah. priest is mm. he's, he's amazing. Like charging, really aggressive, really gaunt face as well, which is cool. So yeah. so that's it. A little bit of uh, customization you could. Adapt that to any chapter. Oh, any chapter yeah. I'm glad you yeah. said that because actually, off the back of the Kirioth episode that we done the other week, yeah. that's got me looking at models like a little bit different now. Thinking about yeah. what to do with Just them. Looking at that model, small. that's the first time where I've seen a new release and been like, "Oh, kit bashing options." Yeah, yeah. Very it's, nice. it's, yeah. it's it's awesome. And, and then obviously before that, so I, week one when I was ill, I was like, oh, like Astrath and the Martis. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And then yeah. like week two, just as I was recovering, like literally, like literally the next two have come out. So it's like incredible. Um, Astrath looks great, I think. It, it look, yeah, it looks good too. I like it. I, yeah. quite like it. I like they've tilted the pose a bit. So yeah. it's like the axe isn't centered. It's like offset mm -hmm. a little bit, which I think is quite yeah, cool. Looks great. I'm, I'm like pretty lukewarm on Astrath. I'm not going to lie. I, I think, think it's a cool model. I don't like dislike it. No, but no, it's just no. one of those ones that's just sort mm. of there for me. It's a, it's a good update. I, it like, good, it's, I think it's a good update. Oh, it's a good update. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think there was enough scrolls on it though. He had more, yeah. yeah. I think I he used the older to have one more, did. But but, um, but yeah, I, overall he's quite a nice model. I'm yeah. not so much sure on the the other. Is it what's it, what's his name? What the Martis? The Martis. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I kind of prefer the older Scott. Oh, bad it take. Looks, uh, bad take. It I, looks more aggressive than the older. I Scott. love the old model. Yeah. The OG model is is mega. However, mm. the new one is so aggressive, like, and it just I fits. It just I, fits him so well, like, it, as a character. Like, it, just, yeah, he's just absolutely. Yeah, amazing. I suppose I'm looking at it as more just a general model without looking at the law because I'm not a. Well, oh, I've, 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 I've the model, the, irrelevant of law. The model <laughs> yeah. is like fan. Like, the, I think but personally, is, yeah. like, yeah. But I think of the two, I think I'd rather paint the other one. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're, they're both they're both solid yeah. models. Like they both are. As the the sort of guy in the middle of all of that, like I couldn't care less about all the lore <laughs> and all that stuff. Fair but yeah. I'm also a big fan of Blood Angels and the aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. So I love that model. I've but used, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, the books. It's yeah. so aggressive. Like the pose. Like uh, just I and also the well the base. Like it's got a real like 
a lot of character models have like tactical rocks and things like that. He's yeah. got a, it's almost like a, a really well presented display base that comes that he's like on some stone mace, some stone steps on masonry yeah. or something. It's like it's just a really, really well presented model. On like that, that note though, like I'm starting to understand what a lot of people say about this stuff now because I never used to be an army like collector and now I've started my own army. When I see stuff like that, now I have to sort of think, oh, how am I gonna tie that base yeah. into my yeah. army? Yeah, yeah. Whereas before that wasn't really a concern for me. It was just like, oh, sick. It comes with a cool base. That means I get to paint a cool base. And now I'm like, oh, that's a really cool base. But, but how am I going to change his yeah. feet so that it fits on my like basic yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm, yeah. The thing is, because he's flat, it's flat. I don't think it's flat. I don't think what, it's flat. The feet? Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe he's, he's like aggressive. Like, I don't know. I, we'll, we'll bang an image up. But like, uh, all right, we've, yeah. we've just looked it up. Fact checked. Is, is yeah. not, we've fact checked. He is not flat footed. I think is, with, it's not crazy. It's doable, but you're going to have to get some sort of like with a, with a, bit, of, with a bit of slate, angled slate under each foot. You'll be able to get a bit of court mark. Yeah, court mark. There we go. You know what? Flashback tiles. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're, but I think you'll, you'll easily still be able to convert that into yeah. into a different different sort of uh, stance it's or something. So looking yeah, forward to whatever comes next. If there's going to be more, is there? There should be, more, be another saying, at least two more releases. They say they, they say weeks. things coming, good things coming threes, and I'm hoping, yeah. I'm, <laughs> hope, I'm hoping. I'm How hoping, many I'm, when when the Dark Angels came out? There was Asmodai <clears> and Belial. <throat> I think Belial was in the launch box, mm, and then you got the was, Terminators. Yeah. So. Yeah. In this is going to be the equivalent. We've got the Death Company mm. and then the characters in that. So that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think what other releases came alongside it. I think it was just Asmodai. I think it was just Asmodai. I mean, the thing yeah, is... The Lion as well, didn't you come out? Yeah, but that yeah. was like long before. I'm saying in that like yeah. run around Christmas when the launch, right, gotcha. when the box came out. Yeah. I think it was just Asmodai. Yeah, I think you're right. I think so. Yeah. yeah. There might well, have been like one other, but this is definitely... My point being, this is definitely more stuff. Than yeah, yeah. Ones. So I who agree. else is to be re-sculpted? Well, the Sanguinor is uh, is obviously Blood Angels won't yeah. have a Primark model for very sad reasons. But but the the spoilers. Yeah, sad spoilers. Sorry. Anyone who hasn't read the Horus Heresy, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the Sanguinor essentially it could theoretically be the effigy of Sanguinius mm. uh, through various different things. I won't bore bore anyone with all the narrative and lore, but. Um, it, it just, it's a really great model of the same model. The old, the old sculpt is quite cool. Um, but rad paint job as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whether it's the metallic or the Classic or the paint job. NMM one, but uh, it, it, yeah, it like I think it does need a new model. It's time, and um, and I, I even though is he fine cast? He must be. He's right? fine cast or metal. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think I, I still would just like a plastic version, very similar to to the yeah you know, I, wouldn't, one. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't want a lot different yeah. I wouldn't want a lot yeah. different I wouldn't I wouldn't want to change it too much because it's such an iconic model yeah. I think like and and he essentially is going to be the substitute for a Primark for Blood Angels in my mind that's what he should yeah. be like you know he's, he's obviously just the, the, he's the saviour of difficult what, you know. to design these models around stuff that is so especially when loved. you've got James criticising yeah. every single move you make oh no I've said <laughs> this <laughs> I've said this already like that, that their design team have babe roofed it so far like yeah. they're, they're, they're don't don't step off a bat. They're just they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're doing, doing home job. runs left, right, and centre. So yeah. so yeah, like um uh the other thing we haven't spoken about, which is something which I actually am probably even more excited than even though the, I'm super excited about all the characters and everything, I think the upgrade sprue is amazing. And I and I and I think that that's been overlooked a little bit. You've got loads mm. of great heads on there, you've got loads of great little trinkets and sigils and all these kind of things. I think one of the things that we've that with Primaris in general is that obviously for a release when they first came out seven, eight years ago, they were quite plain. And, and now obviously you're seeing you've seen all the little upgrade packs of different yeah. chapters and et cetera. Getting getting one for us is really great. And and again, you've got lovely vampiric sort of like facial details. You've got all those things that are inherently Blood Angel, if that makes sense. Mm. And and I think it's gonna allow with a combination of a lot of the older parts that come from the, the amazing current Death Company kit, the amazing current Sanguinary Guard kit, and and then the and and the OG non Primaris Blood Angel upgrade pack. If you have all those bits, plus also this new one, you're gonna be able to add such a richness of flavour to it. Does make to, them look a lot more aggressive now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I think is missing. Third most ag aggressive Space Marine chapter there is. So perhaps, you know, <laughs> it should look a bit more aggressive, yeah. you know, yeah. after. Carl Caradon, Space Wolves, and Blood Angels. Yeah, well, so. no, I was thinking Black Templar, Space Wolves, and then Blood Angels. Oh, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's another, uh, well. another, another <laughs> conversation. Conversation for another day. Comment, put your comment below. It, it, what do you think is <laughs> most aggressive? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm super. I, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing fortnight for being ill. But, um, but yeah, it's <laughs> the best uh, time yeah, I've been ill yeah. ever. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. But no, all in all, super happy. Okay. Just a quick update for all of our lovely listeners. Uh, we've been talking about Patreon for a while on the podcast. I'm sure you've heard the ad reads. Uh, but until now, there hasn't really been uh, a substantial benefit for the podcast supporters. 
And as the podcast has grown over time, we want to be doing more with it. Um, currently, there is a podcast supporter tier, and there's some amazing people that have been very, very fortunate to have supporting us and keeping the show going uh, over the last year and a bit that we've been doing the podcast. Um, but we haven't really been giving any great rewards, and we want to change that. So uh, going forward from this episode, it's already available now if you're listening to this. Going forward, if anyone who is subscribed to that podcast here, what we're going to be doing is providing you with an ad-free version of the podcast in audio format. So that's free of the ad reads that we do ourselves and as well as the ad placements that pop up uh, if you're watching like on YouTube and things like that. Um, we thought it would be really, really important to actually start giving back in that way. And additionally, we're going to be adding a new tier, which in addition to the ad-free audio and all of the, is it 350 plus tutorials that we have on Patreon, all of the amazing painting guides and there's some videos on there, uh, which is updated every single week. In addition to those benefits, you'll also be getting some new benefits. So we're going to be doing ad-free video version of the podcast and it's going to be extended. So you're going to get a paint perspective after dark. We're going to be doing some additional content just for our patron uh, listeners. And you'll also be getting a monthly hangout uh, with some of the podcast hosts. Uh, there'll be details to follow about that as well. Um, and also we're going to be doing like Q&A. You're going to know when we're going to have guests on the show in advance. Um, you're going to be able to like, ask questions that we can read out on the show. Uh, so some amazing benefits. We really, really want to start giving back to our Patreon supporters. And we're so, so grateful for everyone that's supported us so far. So please check the link in the description of this episode. If you're listening on a podcast app, it will be in the show notes. Or if you're watching on YouTube, it's just down below there. Uh, follow the link. Uh, we'd be very, very grateful if you would check it out and just see some of the benefits. And we look forward to providing some awesome, amazing new content. Yeah. So a massive thank you to everyone who's on Patreon, whether you're yeah, for tutorials or for any of the podcast stuff. Just we really appreciate it hugely and uh, hope to see you join us on the new tier. Sweet. Uh, with that all done, uh, let's get into the main topic. Paints that we can't live without. This is one of our favorite sort of recurring episodes that we have done uh, through the course of the paint perspective trajectory. Uh, we like to sort of touch base with these every like 20, 30 episodes or so. So we're going to be doing uh, three more essential paints that we can't live without. Now, the rules for this is that it's going to be three paints, James, that we can't live without. <laughs> Just and, three. Well, How many? <laughs> Just three. <laughs> three. Yeah. And the reason I say we can't live without, these are going to be specific paints that have a unique property or a unique in some way or special to us in some way that cannot be replicated elsewhere. So it's not going to be a oh, I like this red because I like red, or this is a particularly vibrant red. The whole idea with this is it's a unique product. It's fun in some sort of way. It gives some sort of unique way to painting. We think they're cool, and we think that you should check them out. James, what is your first paint of the three of paints three. that you this have This is picked? like the worst. This is our worst nightmare, isn't it, for a chat to talk to James about paint. Right. So I'm going to say right from the off, mm. I've brought more than three. Yeah, of course yeah, we know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's, got, yeah. it's got a carrier yeah. bag I'm full sorry. of paint. I, I'm not going to get the carrier bag out. Uh, but, should, um, I, I sent him the notes yesterday. I said three paints. And I specifically said, James, I know you're a bit of a nutter for paint. So calm down. Just three, just please. Three, yeah. The show's got to stay on time. He showed up with a bag. Yeah. Like literally. But have you got the bag there? I have the bag. It's Do I the have bag, to pick The bag three? that they came in from where I bought them from. So this isn't me just lugging paint around in a carrier bag. I want a caveat. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of paint uh, um, I'll go into a bit more detail on it yeah so um, just walks around all day with that carrying, bag carrying that bag yeah mm. um, so uh, I like metallics a lot I think metallics are some of my favourite paints uh, for, for various different things because they obviously have the natural kind of like glisten because obviously the, met the metallic or the mica or the aluminium flakes whatever the paint you're using has in them um, and I got put onto these several years ago um, when the, the company that makes them or the, the brand was in its infancy and I've got a lot of the previous range and then they were recently bought out by another company or bought the whole brand and range was bought by another company and they've been taken over. The format hasn't really changed to be honest but um, so there's a range of metallics called Dark Star, Dark mm. Star Metallics. Um, they are absolutely amazing and uh, are I've, used, I've painted with a lot of metallics over the years of painting that I've got. And, um, and and there's a lot of things that make a good metallic, like coverage, like shine, all those different things. And again, this is just from my own trying of them. It's not an endorsement through being paid or anything like that whatsoever. But I have genuinely, genuinely enjoyed trying them, using them, exploring with them uh, over the many years of painting. And the new set of them is just just as good in yeah. my opinion they've got there's a few other colors and things as well which is just really interesting so i've brought a few i've pulled out a few oh, yeah, that's generous I've got yeah 30 
I'm not going to get all of them out. I've, only, I've, I've, I've restricted myself to four, which I really like. Four is not three. Yeah. Four, yeah. four yeah. is yeah. not You're going to get five to for three in this episode. Right, well, so that doesn't make sense because yeah. there's four there. Yeah, but there's one behind me. So, uh, uh, so, so, <laughs> so, 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 so there you go. Uh, so I'll do my first one. Uh, and I think before I go into uh, before I go into any other paints, I'll just say that like there, there's a really good variance of tone throughout all of the range. But I picked some of the darker ones plus one on a lighter one. So... Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is Blue Steel, uh, which is a uh, which is an a, a, a almost like a gunmetal bolt gun metal mm. kind of equivalent, but it's got this real subtlety of a bluish hue to it. Hence the name. If you're familiar with Scale Seventy Five Black Metal or a, a sort of a, a, a death metal from uh, from from Army Painter in the in the Fanatic range, then this is this is going to be the the one that you're going to go to, in my opinion. It's just got amazing coverage a lovely, rich, sort of dark metallic tone to it. How um, is it unique compared to those paints? The coverage is just amazing. Right. right? Mm. And it flows really well. Um, coverage is amazing. It flows really well. Um, it just, it, the behavior of it, it, it's got a really nice glisten to it once it's dried as well. Yeah. Uh, and that, and the one thing I would say about the range in general with Dark Star is that obviously we always say that different paints within a range have different characteristics and personalities of all individual the one thing I found with the Dark Star range in general is that the behavioural characteristic of the way it behaves and the finished property and all that is extremely consistent throughout. Some lighter colours in ranges tend to struggle, yeah. but a lot of the lighter colours within this do still behave and perform really, really well. Um, but yeah, for your dark, super dark, like like bolt gun metal, death metal, or deathless metal, whatever, th this is this is this is the, the, good the, the really good, really good mm. one. It's amazing, and it's got this lovely subtlety of a bluish bluish like a cobalt cobalt kind of like tone to mm. it it's really great and it's a really it's a it's great if you're for, we say about playing with temperature but for for adding like a cold metal like mm. a cold metal kind of feel to like metallics especially if you've got like an evil character or something like that this is amazing to kind of make their weapons but what makes that different to me just getting you know some like whacking a bit of lead belt on and putting a blue wash over it because it's not you're you're not inherently within the metallic it's got yeah. a subtlety of a bluish tone it's not like you're just glazing or tinting the whole metallic right like gotcha. it looks like a dark metal but then yeah. it's got this real subtlety of a bluish hue right. to it is that one of those metallics where the uh the flakes in it is like really really fine they or are, is it like the sort of more no uh, they're, they're very 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 fine okay. metallic flake because that's that. my um i don't want to say gripe with gw metallics but i find it sometimes a limiting factor is that depending on the pack like some are they're quite varied but some of them, lead belcher in particular, the flakes in it are it's, they're very big. It's they're they're quite large and it like almost has this kind of like gritty look to it. Yeah. Which mm. I think you can get away with if it's like um a vehicle or like mm. a you know, big knight or something like that. Yeah. But sometimes I find if I'm painting just like a tiny, a really, really tiny little detail, it like messes with the scale a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um I find that some of the GW metallics are better for that. Um, some are worse. Um, but that's why I've liked the scale color and stuff that I've mentioned previously. I've not heard of Dark Star before. They've, they've been kind of under the radar for quite some time. Um, they they've they've been around for a while, but they've been they've been re released recently. And um and and again, they they I, th I think that there's not as much knowledge of them as as um as sort of other other yeah. manufacturers and brands. But um, I think sometimes it's good to just as I said, like with anything, when you're trying a new paint range, get a few of them, try them, see if you like them, and then explore a bit more with the range. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I've never yeah. been. I find it funny when people are like, "Oh, I got recommended this paint." So what I did is I went out and bought the two hundred and fifty paint entire range <laughs> yeah. set, yeah. and yeah. it turns yeah. out I don't like them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then that's how you end up someone like James with like five yeah. thousand paints in you. Yeah, paints. see, see, I I do the opposite. I buy a few, try them, fall in love with the, the range or certain things, and I go, "I'll oh, get a few more." Get and then few he buys more, everything they've yeah. ever released yeah. for the last yeah. forty yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then he's on eBay trying to find some of their paints from nineteen eighty two. Yeah, I must yeah. buy all of the paints. Yeah, all the paint. Yeah, no, but I think it, hence the name of the show, Paint Perspective. It's good to talk about yeah. paint and talk about talk about uh, different sort of like uh, the brands and stuff, just to give give our listeners and, and, and viewers obviously just a, a bigger repertoire to potentially choose from. I think, and I said it's I, fun I, for us actually as well because we just for the listeners we don't discuss these beforehand, so we actually I, I found out quite about quite a few paints mm. from these conversations because the whole purpose of these is we kind of go in blind and we get to share them with each other. I yeah, don't even yeah. know half of these exist because I'm so new to it. <laughs> so I was like. <laughs> It's, it's funny though, because there's so because now the industry is getting so big. Mm. There's a lot of like what they're seemingly small companies pop up, and then just because there's so many of them, like you haven't heard of all of them, it's yeah. like, I can't believe you haven't heard of such yeah, and such. Yeah. And you're like, well, 
Yeah. And the thing is, the other thing I was going to say is you'll like them, George, because they do come in dropper bottles. Yeah, so, I did, yeah, I did notice so, that. They've got so, an interesting lid on those uh, as well. They are, do you know what? They're quite good. Uh, the, 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 the nubbin, if we're going to call it anything, Ooh, the, is, it, the, the nubbin, if we're going to call it anything, is actually uh, is actually quite quite decent size. And I, one thing I've noticed... It's I like a wider neck yeah, than a I normal yeah. dropper I, bottle. I haven't had as many blockages with these um, as I have like Vallejos uh, or, or other other brands that use quite similar similar drop bottles. They're quite, they're like a chunky drop of bottle. That's the only way I Are can they the same it. like They've got a bit full bear in them. No, they don't have a bit. But, oh, yes, they do. They do. They do. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they did. I don't shake them that hard. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, they're, they're, they're quite good. They're, they're really good. Nice. Hmm. Have you got a favorite character from a book or piece of artwork and thought to yourself, if only that had a miniature? Custom Service is our character creation brand here at Siege Studios. Custom Service is not just a kit bash. We create miniatures using traditional hand sculpting alongside conversion for entirely unique and bespoke miniatures that will blow you away. Our talented team of sculptors methodically and meticulously bring your thoughts into reality with the precise, refined and sharp work you'd expect from a digital sculpt and pair that with our world-class painting team for an incredible display piece you'll be proud to own. To bring your character to life and get a quote now, head to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Paul, what have you got for us first on your list? Uh, well, my, the first one on my list is... Um, oh, my, this is a my, wild card. My Dirty Down this. Rust. Nice. Uh, I just... Uh, well, look, I'm obviously pretty new to it all again, uh, less than two years back in painting. So, I mean, if I was my... Um, go to paint if I was probably painting ultramarines would be something more blue or whatever. But because I don't generally paint much of anything, this dirty down rust is great. Yeah, I've I love seen. this stuff. Get a knitting needle, old knitting needle in there to to you know really mix it up in there because it all sort of Congeals. settles in the bottom. It's yeah. like a big blob of gunge in the bottom. <laughs> this is one that I've heard about a lot, especially recently, but I've never tried myself. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it. Because obviously uh, I, I did the old give it a shake for two minutes. No, that doesn't work. You can't shake this. And Do you want to just sort of explain what the paint is for people who haven't heard of it before? Well, it's an awesome rust effect. It, it literally adds texture mm -hmm. and the, just the, a brilliant look of rust. It's, so it's like it's an a, effect paint. Yeah, as it's much all, it's as all, it is, uh... this is water based. This one. Okay. Um, so yeah, you need to really. It's like a there's like a gel in the bottom of this. So you, you really got to make sure you mix it for a, a good couple of minutes. So I just and after I've done that, then I give it a shake, and then whatever's in the lid, I just use whatever's in the lid. Okay. To paint on, um, paint it wherever you want. Leave it to dry, and then if you want a darker rust or actually want more texture in there, whack a bit more on top. I think it's a bit prone to reactivating okay. at times. Well, you can seal um, it with the varnish, though, can't you? I you suppose. can do, yeah. yeah but so. if you plan to paint on top of this, you're yeah. going to do it, do it last kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is the last sort of thing. You're going to reactivate it and move it all around. But it, it is, it's actually quite good for that. If, you, if you've got rust, this product on stuff that you, d you don't quite want it or you want it to be a bit thinner, you can just add a little bit of water directly onto the model and it will reactivate it and you can sort of move it around a little bit. So this, is, this stuff's great. It works on just literally everything. They do other ones, they do like a verdigris and they yeah, do. Yeah, they do, they do yeah. yeah. I've got another one which is like a slime. That's it, yeah. They, yeah. they do verdigris slime and I think. Yeah, I, think I, I haven't actually used that one yet, but I think that's, um, it's a bit more of an, the, like an enamel I think they do a moss thing. as well. I think so. I think, I think they have. Don't quote me on it. I'm not, yeah, I, I know I of that they, one, yeah, but I, I, I know that one and the verdigris yeah. one. I, I got this know. because obviously I was painting, um, what do you call it, Death Guard and yeah, Nurgle yeah. and things like that. And this is great. You can just, you know, just whack it wherever you like and you've got instant rust, especially for weapons and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. So that's one, that's my first. Yeah. Can't good do without that. Good, good paint. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, my one, I haven't actually brought it with me because I'm at home in a few days, but uh, my first one on my list is the AK Interactive Glaze Medium. Oh. Now, this is a recent discovery for Ooh. me. The world of glaze medium. I've been a Lamian medium. I was going to say, is that just the same as a Lamian medium? It's the same in principle, right? But different in the property of said paint. Okay. So it, it's it's it, it's like the Rocky Balboa version. <laughs> it's it, so, right. it is this it is amazing. Lamium is like the featherweight. Lam and... Lamium is great, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. This AK one, George put me onto it. I've used it twice and I'm fully converted. All right. So yeah. I was always someone who thought like glaze medium was something that like occasionally like pro paints do whatever. You hear a lot of people just use water to thin their paints. Yeah, that's what do I'm glazes. doing. I'm, like, I'm doing it wrong, obviously. I've been doing that yeah. for, for years and years and there's never been a problem with that per se. Right. This is one of those things that until you've like, 
tasted the good life. You don't yeah. know what you're missing out on. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what this is, is if you're doing glazing, this yeah. is just an, like an additive that you can put into your glazing mixes. But the difference between like something like a lamy medium or something and water mm. is this is like quite a thick, almost sort of like gel. And the reason that's good is because you can do, the issue with glazes is it's so thin yeah. It's uncontrollable because water has very, very weird sort of surface tension properties, right? So if you wanted to do like loads and loads of really nice, smooth, thin glazes, you get to a point where you've basically just got colored water if it's too thin, yeah. which means it's quite, quite difficult to apply. Or you go the other way where it's too thick and it leaves loads of staining. Where the glaze medium comes in is it's basically paint without pigment. So you can get your normal glaze mix right. in terms of like, uh, dilution that you're after yeah and then what i do is i just put a little sort of blob of it on my palette and just start adding it into my glaze mix to thicken the body of the glaze right so it ends up coming out as more of like a paint yeah and what that does is it basically eliminates any of the staining process oh. from having a, a thicker glaze i have to investigate this yeah is. so my my ratio now is really sort of well there's no golden ratio of glazes because no. you're obviously doing yeah. more or less but basically However much water I'm using, I'm now doing half of that of and water the and the other half with the glaze medium. Yeah, I, I did find with when I was doing my, the red armor on my Azrak, and I was using or trying to use glazes. It was like it's so thin. I was like, this is like the 99th layer <laughs> and 100. <laughs> So yeah, maybe that's something I'll look into. I think. It is because I've heard of this seriously, seriously, seriously good stuff. glazing medium, but I just thought it was so, well. I've got Lamy medium. That must be the same. Is yeah, Lamy medium's like basically water, isn't it? Really, in in terms of its it, viscosity, uh, it's, 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 well, thicker, it's, it's but thicker. It doesn't it just yeah. uh, doesn't sort of Lamy medium. I kind of saw it as making sort of any paint into a contrast type paint. It's similar. It's, it's similar, similar in principle. It, I mean, it 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 factually helps with glazing more than water. Um, and again, you can, you, I mean, and I've you can got, use Lamy medium instead of water as yeah. well. You, like you, right. you can get very similar results across the board, but obviously like with water, cause the way it dilutes and because again, because of the surface tension and stuff, you have to be very, very, very thin and, and, and like you said, apply so many layers to get a consistent yeah. solid, trans before solid transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the way that these mediums and I've used the Winsor Newton blending medium before I've used, uh, I've used the AK one that George put me on to obviously use Lamium. They all they all do a very similar job in the sense of what they do to the paint and the right. dilution that you have. Um, but it's like anything. It's like, you know, if you speak to 10 painters and say, what black do you use or what red yeah, do you yeah. use? It's very similar. Like, like you, you could, all painters could achieve a very similar paint job with the paint that they prefer, if that makes sense. But like the same with the blending, you could, you could use, you could get seamless, consistent blends with whatever dilution body you want to put into your paint. Um, it's just what you prefer, the way it behaves. And it's that behavioral yeah. property of what it adds to the paint when you're doing those glazes. It's also one of those things that's like such a massive quality of life upgrade for your painting for literally three pounds. It's like one yeah. of the cheapest investments that you can make. Like everyone's talking about like buying really, really expensive brushes and like, you know, all these crazy hobby products, which is like totally fair because all of those are very, very useful. But this is one of those, like like the improvement quality to price ratio is yeah. it's a total no brainer. It's one of those few times where like, I'm really preachy about it now. Like mm. everyone I meet, I'm like, do you remember when we was at um, UK Games Expo? Oh, yeah. We was at the stand and I was like, James, you got to get some of this glaze medium. And Joe, uh, Joe was like, oh, what this glaze medium? I should get some of this the glaze medium. The peer pressure. And yeah. there, there was, was other people on the stand that were like, what's this about glaze medium? What's that? What's what do that? I have you to buy got? now? Yeah. 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 I want one. Yeah. Oh, I guess it, I'll have to get some now. It, it, it is really good. I have tried it. Um, mm. And it is very comparable to like Windsor, uh, Windsor Newton blending medium. It's very- I'm sure there's loads of like equivalent products, but it's something that's like right there at the hobby shop with all the other paints. I know yeah. a lot of people use AK paints. It's very, very accessible Yeah, in terms of like, you know, hobby stores and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. It's right there. It's so cheap. It's in a nice little dropper bottle that fits on your paint rack. Drop no brainer. Bottle. Yeah. Exactly. It is okay. Great. James, right. numero two. Numero two. Or three. Uh, numero two. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is the Dark Star. Oh, it's Dark Star again. Yeah, it's Dark Star again. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, I brought, I, 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 I've really been enjoying them. And I realized why, when I said earlier with the other one, the reason why I was surprised mm. why I had a drop, uh, why it's got a, a, an agitator in there is because I've got a lot of the older 
pots that don't have them in and they, it's surprising they've actually put them in is that like if yeah. you're the old army painter paints with a similar sort of thing they're, they're added, uh, it's exactly it's pretty much there. the same yeah. paint the old ones yeah. but but they're just in newer bottles and they've got agitators I didn't realise they did a lot um, of paint companies are doing like yeah. rebrands now with like oh new label them. and there's an agitator yeah. in it, yeah. Yeah. it they are helpful extra 50p I, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, they, they, um, so I've, I've chosen tarnished, uh, tarnished steel uh, from the Dark Star range. It's a really interesting paint. The color that it's got, it's quite a warm, um, mm. it's quite a warm kind of gold kind of color. But it's, it's, it's great. This is the reason I love this paint is, it's great for uh, doing uh, on gold, doing like the, the, the catch lights or doing like the final highlight stages. It's got a really nice. It's slightly desaturated, but it, it gives you a really nice vibrant catch point on but rich I yellow that's gold. quite a unique yeah. color it's, it's really unique. It it's got like, a, like it's almost color. it's almost like a champagne champagne-ish kind of like brownie creamy colored metallic yeah. it's really interesting as a color and this is one of the things that i really like about the, the dark star range in general is they've got some really i don't want to say odd that's not the right word like they've got some really unique tones, tones colors, yeah, yeah um which i really like about it it's it's that i've been using for, for that purpose or that job i've been using one of the pro acryl um uh one of the pro acryl paints uh to, to to do my catch points and things like that but it's this is it's not as bright so it almost mm. gives you a, a less saturated catch light on metallics which is quite nice um but again yeah it's got this lovely champagne kind of tone to it which i think is just really nice um and the other thing that you can do with this is even on like if you're using this, uh, if you're painting like armor, for example, with like the blue steel that yeah. I mentioned previously, or even any other darker metallic, this is amazing for doing edging and, and on darker metallics uh, or like gun metals or slightly brighter than gun metal. It's a really good paint for doing that. Um, and I and, and the thing is, I like the thing I like about the range in general is that it's just as I said, it's got quite a few unique mm. tones within the metallics. Like they've got some crazy crazy sort of like sapphire metallic with like a vibrant rich blue which is really nice and so they've got some really cool colors um but yeah i picked this one because of because of the what you can do with it you can do, add catch points on metallics and also on golds as well which is which, yeah. is which is quite nice as well so that is tarnished steel nice paul what you got next uh well my second one is this dried blood from game color <laughs> i've i've had this I had a little set of these paints. Uh, I think it was just like an undead box set that I thought. <laughs> I forgot that they'd done effects. They I, well, I, I, I tell you, I, I'm going to say this now. I tell you, didn't realise that they'd done, that Game Colour done effects. Yeah, did yeah. you know that? Yeah, this, I, I I, that's one of those things that like I knew, but forgot that I knew. Yeah, this You don't I, hear a lot of I didn't people know. talking about them. No, Honestly, not I, now, I, anyway, did not, I, I did not even know. Now, this, this, I think this... That goes back to how we always talk about how Vallejo have so many. They do, yeah. They've got so many, so many. I, I didn't <laughs> even, even know. Even right. James didn't know I that didn't they had know. an entire line. I've got a whole yeah. bunch of these. I've got about 10 of these. Uh, I, I think I bought two sets of different like effects boxes. There, yeah, yeah. There's only about five or six in each box, different colours. But this is dried blood. And I, I think that one of the most unique things about this is I think they use some actual blood in this because it's <laughs> like, as you paint don't quote it, Paul on that don't quote, Paul, yeah. don't quote me on that but um, as, as it, it gets really tacky and stringy mm -hmm. so as you're painting it it's it's almost like it's got that um, you know you see people putting uh, Yoohoo you glue, glue every, yeah. all over the place it's almost got like some something some properties of that. So it's like a it. sort of stretchy, goopy, stringy it's almost, sort of okay, yeah. It's got some kind of elastic. Very much in so, it. and it dry, and it's it's kind of a really dark red, brownish tone to it. So it, it, it's almost like that rust effect stuff. When it, it dries, it's kind of got a a bit of a, a texture to it as well. It's kind of gloopy and all this. I don't use it so much these days. Obviously, we've, I've been painting more Space Marine cleaner things now at the moment, but. Welcome um, to the uh, welcome to the club. I, know, right? I wanted to comment on that because I've seen I've seen your Empress Champion that you're painting, and I am absolutely blown away. You, you're, you, you've done a, you've done an amazing job on that. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll talk about that. We can talk bit. about that in the uh, in the post yeah. show. Yeah. yeah, but um, so yeah, this was my go-to for for blood effects, and then obviously painting a little you know, a bit shinier, you know, lighter colours on top. But I've got a whole bunch of these. These are great. I, I can't. I I think I bought them on. Amazon, long time ago. I, I think I've had this for at least eight years. Eight uh, years. Eight years at least. Uh, they were just, they were just vintage. The, the, <laughs> you can't have them. Yeah. They're mine. <laughs> yeah, you keep, yeah, I, you keep uh, hold of that. <laughs> I, I think they were just sat in the cupboard for ages, and I thought, oh, one of these days, I'm just going to buy a model and paint it, and I never got round to doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, starting to work here. Well, 
paint paint there becomes you comes get topic. away from it, can you? Yeah. No, it's cool. I, I, I didn't realize. I mean, I literally have yeah, not even. There's um, a whole bunch of them. I think I've got. Um, there's a there's like an undead blood set, which is all kind of just w- cool, obviously yeah, weird blood dark, effects. Right? It's um, like that. It's really I, nice. I can't color. even remember what the other box set was. I don't think I've even opened it. It's just sat there, unused, in in the corner amongst all the other paints that I bought that don't get used. Other than Blood for the Blood God, which is the one I'm sure a lot of viewers have got that as well. Yeah, yeah. It, and that's obviously a bit shiny and it's more rich in, and saturated in its color. But like the only other blood effects that I've tried is when we tried the Fanatic set. Oh right, yeah. That. They had some blood effects in there. I don't uh, think I tried that one when we had that. Yeah, set. they had they had one that's akin to blood for blood god, and they also had a a, a dried blood one. Yeah. And it was it it's almost like it has that got like a bit of like a, a te- like say not sand in it, but has it got like a bit of something grit, in it to, a like grit to create like a bit of texture, or is it not? Well, no, because then it wouldn't come out the job. It would just get bunged up in the in the bottle. No, it? I suppose that is true. That's a good. That's so, a fair point. But uh, the, and the, I'm not that I've ever noticed. Anyway, it seems it seems to come out nice. It's it just seems to be really thick and tacky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the army painter one that we, we tried from that uh, box, that the dried blood in that, mm. it did have like a bit of. It felt like it had a little bit of like texture or something in it when you're using mm. it, like a bit of like a not a grip, but something. Yeah, so uh, might make been, it, a bit it might have been way, the way that like the the gloss, uh, like whatever that gives it the gumminess. Yeah, might maybe. be just the way that kind of dries. Maybe. Yeah, maybe when you're like agitating the kind of dry as it's drying yeah it might be one of those things that dries quite quickly so as you're agitating it starts sort of gunking up yeah, yeah sure. possibly but yeah, yeah it's good stuff i like it it's great oh, cool nice sweet my next one on the list is something that we've spoken about a lot but i don't think we've ever like directly referenced uh it is of course the de facto go-to default perfectly industry standard varnish which is of course uh vallejo's polyurethane matte varnish which is not matte it's actually satin but they call it matte and they also have a satin so go figure (laughs) but regardless of that Mm. uh that is the varnish that i have just defaulted to for everything now so dependable very very easy to use nice results never had any problems with it knock on wood i'm sure i'm bound to have some sort of headache now (laughs) but uh yeah no it's like just the last step in the process i overlooked varnishing models forever because I was like, I only paint for display, never going to game mm. with them. What's the point? And then uh, through doing a lot of commissions and stuff, it was like sort of a required part of the process. And I quickly realized how it's that like final last little stage in the process that just ties everything together. Everything ends up with like the same nice finish, adds a lot of depth to dark yeah. colors that you don't otherwise mm. have. Sometimes a lot of matte paints can look like quite flat and sort of lifeless, especially blacks. Um, and I've tried a few varnishes, uh, but this is an airbrush varnish, unfortunately. Rattle cans are one of those things that I just don't think is I would have reliable. Got, I, I, I just I just personally wouldn't varnish with a rattle can. I've had so many yeah. dramas with rattle cans, I've kind of just won't go there anymore. I know it's a bit deflating for people that don't have access to an airbrush, but I think it's one of those things that I was, kind of, I was saying yeah. it's now unavoidable. Buy, buying an airbrush just so you can varnish is it, worth every penny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we done a, we done an episode like, on on the airbrush. If you want to like sort of learn more about that, then go check out that episode. We'll link it. But uh yeah, that's my been my go-to is the Vallejo polyurethane. Matte varnish. It's not particularly matte, which is a good thing. It's got like a very mm. subtle sheen to it. Not like super satin, but like nice subtle sheen. It's not super flat. It's nothing like the AK Ultra, Ultra matte or anything like that. Yeah. Nothing like that. It's got a nice, really nice finish. Uh, and it's in a massive bottle, uh, which I think I bought like a few years ago and I've still not still got through. Going I've done months, many yeah. armies with, yeah. with yeah. that bottle of varnish. So it'll last you a lifetime. It's not particularly expensive. Super easy to use. Easy to find. I'm just sitting there at home with me st- little bottle of Storm Shield. <laughs> yeah, that's varnish. Look at yeah. that. The issue with like yeah. the br- even the there are some brush on varnishes which I've occasionally used for like particular details, like if there's like yeah. a gemstone or something that wants to be glossy. Mm. But yeah. I've found that even with thinner and such, it's very very hard to get a textureless. Yeah, I think if you're thin enough with it, if you thin down the varnish enough, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's it's not impossible. Is it? But it it, it does. An airbrush varnish is not impossible, it's impractical, yes, yeah, especially on the scale of an army, yes, 100%. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you'd be there forever, yeah. yeah, but good job. I don't paint armies, yeah, <laughs> okay. James, what's your next? I'm guessing it's Dark Star, it's not, no, no, no. Oh, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> shock horror, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no uh, I am, of course, going to talk about the thing that I've been spending a lot of time painting with recently, which is, and uh, I have to do some weird f- movement to get it, it is none other than um. 
uh, Siege Armor, which is our signature series can from Colorforge. Um, so some of you may or may not know, I have started a Space Marine chapter called The Exemplars of Siege, which I'm doing obviously with this can and uh, this color scheme. Um, and I've James been... got approached to do any color he wants. And he, yeah. went, he went, I know, to... I'll make this really convenient for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll talk about it. So. The, the the color rune or brass has been out in the market for some time, obviously with the spray can. And, and um, I know a lot of people that have collected Necrons, like there's a specific dynasty that has that kind of color scheme. Mm. And there's a lot of people that do like, say for example, um, uh, different like Minotaurs, for example, or loads of different, loads of different metallic based uh, sort of armies or chapters and stuff. And that can was a real staple of it. And, um, and we spoke uh, about how those colors are really, really useful for uh, like, being a baseline for tinting. Yeah, 100%. So I think yeah. brass is one of those colors that you can tint a lot of different ways. You've got like more of like a champagne color. You can start adding like various tones of like purple and whatnot. Mm. Get like, it's a nice base starting point to get like 10, 20 different like tones different colors of metallic. Yeah. I, I, amen. And and the thing is, I mean, look, just, just segueing slightly, if I really wanted to do a can for myself, it would be a blood red can. So that that's what it would have been, but I, I thought. But you're yeah, a man I, of the people. I try to be a man of the you're people. You're a man of the yeah, people, 100%. and you thought instead yeah. of uh, this isn't just that. for me. It's yeah. for others too. The, the, yeah. the thing is, is and conveniently yeah. my personal private <laughs> space marines chapter that I started. So here's the thing: I wanted to make do two things with it. I wanted to make it so that we basically had a chapter that for anyone who's uncertain on sort of like what chapters to collect, that maybe they find a template, they could either change a certain color on, rather than the emerald, they could do blue or purple or red or like, or doing the tin tin that we've said. Mm. And really uh, the, the good thing about obviously this is that it's got quite a warm tone as well, which is quite nice. Um, obviously we spoke about it on previous episodes, Paul Norton's uh, Iron Ravens, the the, the the silver space marine chapter that's got the different colors, et cetera. And I, and I thought it'd be really nice to release a can, which has got a really nice rich brass color. Um, that you can do all that kind of stuff with and also with it create uh, obviously a chapter or do a chapter um, that allows us to then obviously have something a bit interesting yeah. that, that we talk about um, so yeah so I, I've had a lot of fun using it it's been a really nice process to, to get it to, to where it is um, so that's that's part of the signature series yeah. with a few other creators and channels that, yes. come, that comes out quite soon doesn't it quite soon so yeah it's, uh, uh, we're obviously in August at the minute so I think you were looking maybe sort of like September October time it's going to be available I think um, obviously there was a Kickstarter I think that Colourforge done um, but yeah the can will be available at some point very soon in the future uh, if I'm looking think. forward to doing a, a, some of those exemplars of Siege I think I'm, uh, I'm itching to do some metallics yeah, I've, I've always loved I've always loved doing metallics mm. and I haven't done anything on a grand scale with it uh well, so. it's it do you know one of the things i've found really like really nice with it is that you can do a lot of like glazing and tinting on it like yeah. some of the models that i'm doing at the moment for the chapter <laughs> it's so easy and so quick it is like, it really is spray a whole model metallic do a couple of washes and you're like oh i'm like oh, i'm That's really done. good at this yeah. <laughs> i'm a pro painter yeah, it, it, it's been really really fun to use it and uh, and again the good thing obviously is you get a big can so like it's it's you know it's a decent size can that's what i've always well. liked about the colorful cans because i've been using the matte black since like basically it came mm. out and uh the cans is it 500 mil it's 500 mil so it's bigger than like most other it's, it's bigger than most cans. other brands yeah. out there which is which is good um price point's not bad as well but um but again it's all about finished property obviously like the matte black is obviously matte yeah. black um i still still big fan of cast black i use cast black a lot as well so i, I you know i like the more satin finish that that has um personally but um but i, I use both i use the matte and also I use cast black um, but yeah, this has been, it's been, it's just been really nice to, to, and also it's, it, I've got to say, it's like after over a decade of the company existing, it's actually nice to have a product that, that's, that's something out there that was yeah. got a logo on it. You know, it's a nice, nice cool thing actually. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so again, Siege Armour Can has been, been really fun to work on. Um, and you'll see more of that as I, as I continue on the chapter on the, cool. on the, mm. po, on, the on the Insta Instagram. Instagram account. I've recently put up the new logo as well. The, I say the new logo, the chapter icon has just mm, gone up as nice. well. So, Very cool. so yeah, so, um, so yeah, but that's, that's, that's my third paint. Well, we touched on a uh, matte yeah. black there and mm. I'll segue that very nicely because one of the products which I've picked is a new one to me mm. and one that I'm very, very grateful for because we have spoken on a few episodes previously about our trials and tribulations with airbrush primer and we all echoed that we have had problems with it sticking and a lot of the audience piped up and said that they don't have problems i think it was one of those things where it's just like there's so many variables on like drying time humidity climate how much thinner you add and yeah. all that sort of stuff so but everyone that i've spoken to in my own personal circle seems to have trouble with it maybe it's to do with like the where we live and yeah. the climate and whatnot but i have finally found james an airbrush primer that not only 
works and sticks and doesn't scratch off after two minutes, but also it's very, very nice color. Mm -hmm. And my favorite part has just that, you know, when you use a rattle can and you do it well, it's still flat and smooth, but it's just got that little tiny, tiny bit of like biting grit just mm -hmm. so that paint sticks nicely to it when you're brushing over it. Mm -hmm. This has got that as well, mm -hmm. which has always been my problem with the airbrush primer. Mm -hmm. It's like so slick, paint's yeah. almost like, you know, <laughs> gliding off of it. So this is AK's black primer for the airbrush. And I bought this saying, I'll just give it a go because everyone's been talking about all the different ones and all their different recommendations mm -hmm. for just randomly I chose this and thought I'll give it a try. And I didn't realize that it is a super, super matte finish. I didn't realize that it would have that nice texture and added bonus, it sticks well. I've had no issues with it. I literally gave it one go on a whim on a test model. I thought, okay, I've had it sat on there. Uh, I bought it a few months ago and I've had it just like sat on my hobby desk yeah, and I'm like it. waiting for a project that yeah. I wouldn't mind messing up yeah. uh, just in case. And I thought, okay, finally, like, I've, got, I've got to give this a go. It's been sat for ages. Everyone's been talking about it. So finally gave it a try and it put it in the airbrush perfectly flowed out, mm. went onto the model nicely, tried nicely. After like an hour, it was already like yeah, yeah. really on there. I started sanding it just to like see how, it, if it would start like having that sort of peel yeah, effect. Yeah. Didn't just like sand straight, straight through it, have a nice little bit of texture on it. Perfect. Yeah. So I've solved, the, I've solved the airbrush primer issue, I think. Yeah. Having that good bite undercoat color is so important. Oh, I have to, I have to give it a go because I've had nothing, but I've had, I've not really had the best experiences with surface. Uh, uh, me neither. So, it's been hell. So, yeah. Mm. Until now. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. say that usually I'm still probably going to stick to a rattle can just for the sake of speed yeah, yeah. and the fact that I can do like loads of models in mass yeah. very, very quickly and it dries pretty quickly as well. However, uh, I think going forward for maybe some like competition pieces, things say, like yeah. sub-assemblies yeah. and whatnot yeah, where you can like get in there into all the little... Tactical uh, yeah. spray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would recommend. Yeah. So uh, thank you everyone for suggesting that to me. It's worked out mm. pretty well. Nice. Good. Paul, final one? Uh, well, my final one is, I suppose, in general, these sort of technical paints, GW, for I, I love the fact that you're bringing all the technical paints to this. It's this been box. very technical. It's been I, there's not been a it's, single actual paint. Yeah, it's <laughs> well, great. No, it's I, good. Good. I think they, these are sort of important to me because I can use them across anything that I'm painting, really. I can always use any of these for anything. Um, obviously, being free of, like, like I keep saying, I don't, you know, don't, I'm not tied to an army. I just paint wherever I want. So, and also being that I, I don't really get on very well at creating my own bases, these paints, which are just obviously just textured paint, aren't they? You just paint with some that sand. That has in got it. sand in it. This one definitely <laughs> has got sand in it. Um, and you can get the other, some other paints that as they dry, they sort of shrink and pull yeah. apart and things like that. I, they're, they're great for me because I can, after I've built my model, I can just paint a coat of this, let it dry and then undercoat and... I've got like a pre-made base. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just, and especially for just something being quick and easy. Um, but my, I suppose my favorite one is the Sterling Mud. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's so good. It's not as though, it, I mean, you can just pile this up. If it's not thick enough after it's dry, just whack a bit more on. You can just keep building it up. It dries perfect. It doesn't seem to shrink. Well, I've not noticed it. Um, as it dries, it shrinks and pulls apart or drops off or anything. It, it seems pretty good. And, it's, and for, for dry brushing at the end, Amazing. It's just brilliant. It's just great. I've actually I just, I love spoken um, spoken a few weeks ago about how I like to use that, even if I'm doing like a normal sand texture yeah. base. I like to use that like around the feet and like almost as like a touch up yes. for anywhere I've missed. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I think what I might just do it. it I mean, when this eventually runs out, I mean it's quite a large part of these things. Excuse me. Uh, I think what I'll do is when this actually runs out at some point, um, is just make my own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've heard but, that. Um, I've seen I haven't actually used it but I know that Vallejo do like a big tub yeah, like I yes paint. I think I might that's, yeah I've seen that quite a lot so I, there might be something I might you're, you're preaching next. texture paste in general I suppose yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah in general that, I, that whole range uh, the technical range of the basin basin paints if you want to call them I suppose that's the thing to call yeah. them yeah. Paints, so they're, they're amazing There's the, the Valhalla Blizzard for snow I've always thought that's was really one. good yeah. like the Armageddon Dust Astro Granite like they've all been they're really not, really good the nice thing about those as well is because they're Citadel they have a if you can work out which paint it is, there's normally one that marries up to it as like a touch up. Yeah. Um, I can't think what it is for Stella Mud in particular, but there's definitely a brown. Rhinox. Like, Rhinox. Yeah. No, dryad bark. Uh, one of those. Yeah. Like, dryad bark or something but like I mean, that. I, I don't really care what color this is because it, it's, it. it's just going to be, I just, it just gets primed with the model anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I feel like uh, that would actually marry up very nicely with your rust effect paint actually. 
because you can use that to have yeah, like a little can, bit of texture yeah. and you then could, go in with the rust do. and it will start I, to look like I did corrosion. wonder whether, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think I've seen it a few times with people trying to paint text, like these technical paints onto their models. Yeah. But they always just seem to flake off and they don't seem to stick very well. Especially like the, I've seen uh, some people trying to use the, the, the sort of sort of crackle paint. I don't, mm. can't remember, I don't know what you call that. It's sort of, as it dries, it shrinks and pulls apart. Yeah, so yeah. you get all the, the cracks yeah. in it. I've seen people trying to paint that onto shoulder pads, and but it ends up just flaking off. I've, I've ruined a perfectly good gladiator tank uh, with some of that mm. mud, trying to do some mud effects around the uh, yeah around the area. Yeah, not a good idea. Don't do that. Uh, You're better off PVA in sand. PVA in sand for, for tanks and things like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah what, but I, I mean, for, for, for bases, it, it, it eliminates the getting the PVA out, putting the sand on it, then putting more PVA on top once that's dry. It's quick sort of and easy. It, it is yeah, quick and it's easy. Just, it's yeah. just one of those times that you can just grab it, you can just paint, you can just and whack it on. It's and, one of those things as well where like I can see that marrying perfectly to your style of painting where you're just painting random stuff, yeah. one yeah. model at a time. Like if you're an army painter, I totally get why you're yeah. going to want to use your own basing mix or whatnot just for repetition and efficiency and cost as well. Yeah. But if you're someone who's like, oh, I've just got this quick project on the go, Oh, yeah. Do I want to get my glue out and then wait for it to dry outside? And what you like? I ah, just chuck a bit of that texture paste. Yeah, especially because you know, obviously, just like painting the model, I'm not really half the time. I don't care about the, <laughs> yeah, about the base. So just having something you, I can just quickly dry brush. It's great. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Wins nice. every time. Nice, nice little, uh, nice little mix there. Some. Uh, I wasn't expecting. Uh, I don't think any of those actually. I was expecting James to rock up some more retro stuff in no, retaliation. No, 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 no. The, co the comments on the post done all the retaliation for me. Yeah. Well, do you know? Do you know how they're so bad? He didn't even feel the need to bring them with him. I know, right? Yeah. But most of my they paint didn't need to quite new, isn't it? So I haven't really got much from long ago. Really. No, that's so fair. Yeah, everything is new and what I'm learning at the minute. So. Good, sweet. If you're a fan of the show and you want to support us, then you should know that we have dropped some awesome merch on the Siege Studios shop. We've got several shirt designs with this really cool graphic on it, which has loads of cool painting nods and references. I've been wearing mine all of the time for months now, and I genuinely get compliments constantly from people who have absolutely no idea what Warhammer is. The shirts are really nice, high quality cotton, and everything is in stock and dispatched by us. None of that print to order nonsense. So if you want to check out the designs for yourself and see the other merch that we have on the shop, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. And if you use the code POD10 at checkout, you'll save 10% and you'll get a free sticker pack with your order. Okay, well, last month, month of July, we always do our monthly painting challenges on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And last month was hashtag Julegion, which is far and away the worst pun of the year. <laughs> yeah. What so even is thank that? God that's been and gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, July, is, July was a tough one. Next year, we'll have to think of something better. So leave your suggestions. But Julegion was... Monthly challenge, and the rule was you can paint anything Space Marines, but bonus points if it was heresy themed. Yeah, and oh. we've had so many submissions. I, I'm not even going to be able to pull all of them individually. So enjoy this Discord slideshow because uh, there is so many submissions. This this was ridiculous. There's been so many. It's going to take me so long to go for it. So mm. uh, thank you everyone for submitting. Uh, before we get into some of the submissions that we've had, uh, the month of August is going to be hashtag. Solar Orgzilia, which is you can paint anything <laughs> humans or humanoid from any game system. If you want to submit, uh, hashtag link to Discord's description, all that stuff, check that down below. Uh, and you can submit in our Discord for the monthly painting challenge. We'll show our favorites on the show. And hopefully the idea is that we're supposed to contribute to these as well. But it's been a bit of a crazy month mm. with James being ill and I've had some difficulties and whatnot. I'm out of painting at the minute. So uh, <laughs> that aside... Uh, should you we go to... through some of these submissions? Have you picked out any? Charlie Count Sunk, Emperor's Children, Venerable Contemptor Dreadnoughts in a rich purple that's so warm it could go on holiday. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, Emperor's Children, really vibrant scheme, as you can see, obviously, on the image. Uh, like the fact that it's got three-handed chemos across the chest as well. Obviously, the home planet of the Emperor's Children. Um, just really nicely painted and the, ri the really overbearing gold as well just literally to complement the sort of exquisite kind of purple that it's got it's really nicely done nice uh, mine is Invictus Lampada has done a white scar which is a Primaris Marine so it's not heresy themed so no bonus points mm. there bit but it's a first founding chapter so a bit of a rule bend kudos 50-50 so yeah. could go either way let, that, let one. that one go yeah yeah very nicely painted though with the very very sharp sort of heavy metal style highlights uh, very 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 nicely painted 
Uh, and mine is from uh, Walnuts One, who's painted some Atlantean spears. He's even gone as far as trying to ha- freehand the Atlantean spear trident on the shoulder pads there. It's like OSL. It's cool. it's pretty cool. yeah. Yeah. Difficult, yeah. difficult shape to freehand the trident. It's a bit of a, it's got yeah. quite a few angles on it. So. Anything symmetrical is a nightmare. It ain't, yeah. it ain't no dinner fork he's trying to paint <laughs> on there. And, uh, yeah. I love the power sword as well. That's pretty cool. I love yeah. that. Sweet. I love that model as well. Yeah, Painted one of those nice myself. Model. It's a very cool model. Yeah, yeah very sweet. Cool. Well, again, thank you everyone for submitting uh, to this month's monthly painted challenge. And we look forward to, in the first month of September, we'll go for all of the entries for Solar Auxilia. We've got the whole month. So check out the rules and the links in our Discord. Doesn't have to be Solar Auxilia though, does it? No, it doesn't have to be Solar Auxilia. Bonus points of Solar Auxilia, James. Okay. All right. But it's anything humanoid. humans or humanoid so, so, from any game system. So I, anything with I two could, legs. I could... <laughs> Squeeze in some some Mordians potentially for that, could I? Yeah, I, I could see Mordians. I'll, I'll take Mordians. That's yeah. basically modern. That gives you modern solar auxiliary. Them, I suppose. Is, yeah. is guard, guard is just like solar auxiliary. Yeah, 40K, 40K, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'll take that. Uh, question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do leave it in the comments down below. This week, we have a question from Runaway Stereo who says... Regarding painting efficiently or with speed in mind, how easy do you find it to bring your standards down for the sake of getting a project finished? That's a really good question. Mm. Um, I throw a little bit of a segue into that and say, rather than bringing your standards down, do less, but what you do do, bring do, it up. do sharp, neat mm. and smooth. So that, yes, you are factually doing less on the miniature, but what you're actually doing is to compensate for it being less, you're just being neater and smoother and sharper. Does that make sense? Yep. So it kind mm. of, it it balances the loss of there not being so much on there. So if you're only doing occasional hot edge highlights, all the edge highlights that you do, be it on upper areas or whatever, yeah. make them as sharp as possible. So yeah. that, it, it, that lesser amount, because it's sharper and more refined, actually does more for the miniature. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's that's what I would yeah. probably recommend. It's a struggle that's obviously like being a, compi- uh, being a commission painter myself. It's obviously mm. a struggle that I've sort of dealt with. Um, the way we deal with it at Siege, we have sort of like different standard tiers and like even our bronze level is like a very, very nice, very, very high quality like above gaming standard yeah. finish. Um, for me, I think it's similar to what James said, like just everything that you do do well and nicely like just because it's fast doesn't mean it has to be lesser quality i think it should just be lesser total amount of work yeah so Mm. rather than doing four stages of highlights i'm only going to do one but that doesn't mean i'm going to do it quick and dirty and all over the place it's like just doing less stages so try to find the stages that are less important to you and Mm. remove them from the process then the stages that you are doing spend the same amount of time that you would do on them normally but you're just removing all of those extra steps Mm. it's like you know with all the gems rather than doing it in like, you know, loads of crazy blends and all that. I'm going to do it in just one color, but it's going to be nicely blocked in. It's going to be nicely yeah. shaded and so on. Yeah. Um, just finding those shortcuts to those stages. I'm a sort of box art style painter, which means that I'm typically doing like four or five stages of edge highlights. Might only do one, might only do two, but it's yeah. still going to be a nice, sharp, clean line. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be a, oh, well, I'm speed painting now, so I'm going to dry brush the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we, often, we, we often say that, like if the, if the, model, if the models are really sharp, really neat, then and you've only done one highlight stage or you've done less work then the the, the fact that there's less work doesn't detract from the quality of what you have done yeah, does that yeah. make sense so like so yeah i i i definitely definitely focus on what i am doing on it it being less but what i am doing being the best i can do of that one thing and so, tying in mm. as well to what we spoke about the metallic schemes earlier yeah. work smarter not harder yeah. <laughs> think tactically about what colors you can use for things to save time yeah. think tactically about what paints you can use to save time oh i really really like the color of this paint but the coverage isn't as good as this other one so i'm just going to take the loss on that i'm going to use this one because it's going to take me less time yeah I'm trying to find those shortcuts yeah, yeah. The, beauty, the beautiful thing with metallic schemes again is if you've got guns if you've got swords if you've got all these different things they're the same color as the armor but you just get it done in one spray do you know what i mean so so yeah there, there are a lot of things to think. and I, I think you're quite right in what you said about paint choice is actually really important with that as well because you might be working with four different paints for a certain thing but if you have one that covers really well then it, you don't need to use those three other paints does that make sense mm, so yeah and so, even, yeah. If, even if you're someone who's like say painting like volumetrically with the airbrush and all that rather than doing like four or five different stages of blends it's like add yeah. zenithal one coat over the top or try yeah. working with a limited palette just yeah. pick five yeah. colors and just 
work your whole model from those five colors so, so in complete flip to normal don't go mental with color <laughs> well go <laughs> mental with color but we're just fine <laughs> you've make, actually you've got to make up for it by going more crazy with color choices yeah. crazy. go mental with less color I, yeah. I don't know, I, <laughs> go mental with color with fewer paints yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 some, I struggle to do let myself or try and force myself not to do the best I can every time yeah yeah so I almost sort of if, if I if I don't, then the model I don't I don't like it in the end. I end up punishing myself over it. But I, I have tried to be a bit more uh, free about at the weekends. So mm. yeah. yeah, nice, good. Our weekly tradition on the podcast is, of course, a segment which we call Hobby Hacks. This is where we share a little hack, quick tip, product, something like that, with you, which you can hopefully incorporate into your painting. And I've got one this week, and Blue James's mind. We did a little mm. painting session over the weekend. We were doing some terrain. Oh. oh, reminder, by the way, shout out Rob, uh, who we bumped into. Yeah. Uh, we went to the hobby shop to get some supplies and we uh, bumped into a listener of the podcast, which yeah. is always fun. That's great. Nice. Yeah. So big ups, Rob. Uh, but anyway, on point, I showed James this little little trick. I've got uh, this sort of mini spray bottle, which I think is designed for if you're like, you know, when you're going traveling uh, and they yeah. give you like those little mini bottles so that you can get for like airport security or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a little mini spray bottle, which I presume you're supposed to put some sort of things in. Uh, this is different to the misting bottle, which I use for my palette, bonsai yeah. tree. Uh, this is a tiny little spray bottle. <laughs> and I use this for a myriad of things, but the main one being the airbrush. So when you've got your airbrush and you're going to dump out all of your paint, you're adding, mm. I typically add water just to flush mm -hmm. in between paints and whatnot. But I've got this little spray bottle. And why you might think a spray bottle is cool is because... The sort of cone shape of the airbrush cup, it's like a funnel, right? yeah. matches perfectly to the cone shape, the spray pattern of a spray <laughs> right, bottle. Yeah. So instead of just using like a dropper bottle or a syringe to put water into the, yeah. uh, or like an eye drop or whatever to put it into the cup, you spray it because it basically coats all of the side walls mm. of the cup mm. and it, all the paint like runs down into the middle. That That's sense? obviously important to airbrushes. It was quite... Because it, mean, it okay. means you haven't got to get a brush in there because typically if you're adding water, you've right. got to get a brush in there mm -hmm. and stir all of that drying paint that's drying around the sort of edge of the paintbrush. Right. Uh, sorry, I, the airbrush I know cup. not of this witchcraft. We, we, were, we so. were painting some scenery and... and, and uh, I, I've never, James laughed. I've, I've he never laughed seen when I it out. someone so 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 violent with a with an atomizer in my life. Well, it was. Hey, <laughs> why can't you just put paint in the little spray bottle and just use that? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a. I mean that's it's it. a hobby hack within a hobby hack. Have yeah. you ever got much money? A cheap no. air, airbrush. Cheap airbrush. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, I'm gonna try that's, it. That's I'm got an airbrush and you're just airbrushing it to the <laughs> yeah, atomizing yes. it onto the model. Yeah, yeah. just that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, forget the airbrush bit. That, don't need that in your life. Just get the atomizer. Yeah. I told James about this. I was like, I've got a little hobby hack for you. I'm going to share it with you this weekend. And mm. James was like, oh, for God's sake, like, what is it now? Whatever. And then by the end of the day, he was like, give me, give me the spray yeah, bottle. Yeah. Give me the spray can, I, can I give that? Can I give that? Yeah. Go. That's actually all right. Yeah. That's quite yeah, good. can't be any more crazy than using a, a hammer drill to drill out your barrels, for goodness oh, sake. Oh, I'm so glad you brought up hammers, Paul. James, yeah. remind me, what was the tool you used now? to assemble so some that, of this scenery? So that we were building some scenery. There was a part that wasn't going on. So... When you're building, you use the real tools, yeah? So we're building scenery, building buildings. I got a hammer out and I hit this piece onto the model it, and, it, and it worked. Yeah. It worked. But it doesn't surprise me because when James says, oh, this little bit of model's falling off and then just bends it over his knees and it actually does fall off, whacking things together with a hammer doesn't surprise me. It works. Me. Right, yeah. Who, yeah. Who, who knew you can use hammers to build wargaming scenery? The, the, so. the mental picture that I've got saved brings me so much joy of James just stood there haphazardly beating this bit of scenery to death. It won't come off though, I can tell you that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute scenes. Well, on that note, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. We're going to switch over now, so this will be the bonus episode on Patreon, so keep listening if you're watching on Patreon. Uh, but to everyone else, a massive thank you for watching the episode, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>